everybody. I am Michelle Michelle, and thank you for joining me. This is my show, and right now it's coming from the office at church because that's where I am filming this at. That's where I am, and I'm filming, so so it has to be. Look, my fingers are kind of blue looking. It's not because I'm freezing to death, which I am, but it's because I just got my hair done. Yee so you know how much I love getting my hair done. Um, and I think that's one of the um, common misconceptions about people um, is that, you know, you're not worth the self, you're not worth the extra care because, um, you know, you can barely take care of, of things. <laughs> and I say this as somebody who has now, um, I've lived with my parents for a while. My daughter has moved out <laughs> before I did. And, you know, I don't pay for anything. And I mean that in like the truest way. I have no income right now. And so um, while I have been working on some jewelry pieces and I have been, you know, writing, none of that, none of the money has come to fruition. And so that's when, um, you know, you have to kind of learn that family matters because sometimes you just can't take care of yourself. And don't get me wrong, sometimes family is not related. Oftentimes, maybe most of the time. But there are certain things, you know, like it's difficult for me to do my hair. I'm in some of my older, older, older videos, I think, I may have had, I had long hair. And when all of this started, I had long hair, except I did uh, cut it all off, um, you know, a couple days before my surgery, maybe four or five days before my brain surgery. Um, but then I let it grow back into its full shape. And so people will be like, oh my gosh, Michelle, you got your hair done. And I'm like, yes, I'm so thankful. You know, and they're like, how much did it cost? And I'm like, I have no idea. And it seems like... Um, I mean, I guess maybe to some people, it seems like I'm extremely spoiled. But these are all things I used to do myself at home. Um, the cuts, the colors, the layering, the flat ironing, the washing, you know. And so I can't do that anymore. And at some point, my hair still needs to be cut. It still needs to be styled. It still needs to be cared for and looked after. And so this is what we come up with once a year now. I, I really toned it down. So once a year now, uh, sometimes twice a year, in the spring, like right after it turns, or like right before it turns into spring, you know, and then uh, after swim season is over. And we have decided we are not going to swim anymore this season because we're not. And I'm okay with that. I've got my little, I've got a little peddler thing. And so I can still get my exercise and I'm fine with that. But all that being said, everything that I have, I have to rely on someone else to um, provide me with. And I'm not going to feel bad because someone's willing to pay for my hair to be done. They could just as well say no and I would, I'd be okay, you know, like I'm not, I kind of cut my hair. I mean, I, I've done it. I'll probably hurt myself at this point, <laughs> but you know, and I guess, oh, excuse me, sorry guys. I have this nasty headache and it makes me so tired and sleepy. I think it's just like your body saying, ah, please, I don't want to deal with this. And so, you know, anyway, in the end, People shouldn't have to choose self-care um, over food or choose food over self-care or, you know, like, there are a lot of areas that can be redone to allow people to flourish. And that is what we need to really, oh my gosh, I see. 
<laughs> but that's what we really need to do is, you know, allow people to flourish in what it is that they do and how they do it. And not knock each other when someone does something that you, you know, may not think is, is awesome, you know, but just because. Like, you may not think it's awesome to have purple and or blue and pink hair, and when they mix, it looks like purple, but, like, I think it's awesome. And every time I look in the mirror, I'm excited and happy for seeing it. And it doesn't matter if other people like it. Trust me, my whole church had to get used to it because I came to church with blue hair one day, and it was over. That's who I am now. <laughs> if I could get it to grow blue, I would. But, you know, I'm not going to feel bad because people do nice things for me. And I don't think anyone should have to feel bad. And honestly, I believe that people should be able to earn um, or have a, a, an amount that they get that allows them to just do nice things. Allows them to do life things. Allows them to go shopping. Allows them to buy shoes. Like, the system that we have is not capable of um, supporting anything but payers. And there's so many of us, like myself, you know, I am... Um, I do so much here at church that I'm sure people will probably get paid a lot of money to, to do. Um, but it needs to be done. And there's people here who can't afford to have that service done. So I'm doing something at no cost so that someone can have it at low or no cost. And I don't, I don't understand why everything can't work that way. And I'm sure it has something to do with like the word economy or capitalism or money hungry, greedy, you know, people, but whatever. Um, and, and yes, my fingers, I think I told you they're blue because of the hair thing. I can't stop touching it. So I don't know. Anyway, that's pretty much it. That's all I came to say. Let people have nice things. Don't worry about where they got nice things. Sometimes nice things are gifts. Sometimes nice things are earned. Sometimes nice things are found. But don't take away people's nice things just because you don't like it. Okay? All right, good. So, anyway, I am Michelle Michelle, and this has been my life. Now go get your own.